Thanks for joining and welcome back to Digital Technology Exports to ASEAN Part 2. Firstly, we will hear from Janelle Casey, Queensland State Director for Austrade, who has spent over 12 years of her working career in various trade commissioner posts, including Singapore, Hong Kong, and most recently Vietnam. Janelle will cover the high level overview of opportunities in each of the country markets throughout ASEAN. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Janelle Casey to present on Austrade's opportunities in ASEAN for digital tech. On behalf of the Austrade Digital Technology team located across ASEAN, I have pleasure today in sharing their knowledge of the opportunities and challenges in ASEAN. So why ASEAN? Just to recap, the ASEAN population is the third largest in the world after China and India. Growth of the middle class is estimated to reach 161 million by 2030. Australia already has a two-way trade with the region, which is greater than the US and Japan. Expanding urbanisation, digital transformation, and as you have heard from Peter, deepening integration and connectivity across all ASEAN markets. So let's focus on six of the 10 ASEAN countries, which we believe offer some of the greatest opportunities for Australian digital technology companies. Vietnam has the highest acceleration of the internet economy in ASEAN, a rise of a connected, young, mobile-first population, 60% under the age of 35. They have an active e-commerce platform as well as a growing inflow of foreign investment. And the Vietnamese government is developing supportive regulatory frameworks, a tax system and data security policies. Key areas of opportunity are fintech, including big data uh, and artificial intelligence, cybersecurity and reg tech. Digital health, including mobile health, healthcare information systems, and the uh, application of advanced technology such as telehealth. Some of the challenges. Vietnam remains a cash-based economy. However, this is changing. Regulatory frameworks still lag behind industry development. Cybersecurity law, which regulates the storage of user data, still requires further guidelines. Singapore is a startup ecosystem leader in ASEAN. 5,000 tech startups, over 100 local and global incubators, and over 100 venture capital firms. Out of the 7,000 multinational companies located in Singapore, about 4,000 operate their Asia-Pacific headquarters there. The Singapore government has extensive funding for R&D initiatives, and Singapore is ranked first in terms of cybersecurity spend amongst the ASEAN nations. The healthcare system in Singapore is future-focused to build a future-ready healthcare system. Some of the areas of opportunity include cybersecurity products and services and leveraging Singapore as a gateway to the emerging Asia-Pacific markets, particularly in the digital health space. Enterprise technologies targeting the MNCs and the Asia-Pacific headquarters. So the challenge, there is relatively a low awareness of Australian tech and startup capabilities in the market. Malaysia is potentially an ideal test market for Australian companies entering ASEAN. It has a skilled multilingual workforce, advanced infrastructure and logistics networks, it has a high level of digital adoption and internet penetration, but limited fintech innovation to date, despite growing consumer demands. Malaysia has one of the highest urbanisation rates in ASEAN, so the government and the private sector are increasingly looking for solutions that can help create smarter and more livable cities. So the key areas of opportunity are enterprise solutions in automation, digitization, e-commerce, creative technology, AI, black blockchain, cloud computing, data analytics, and cybersecurity. There are also increased demands for telecommunication products and solutions. And due to the increasing affluent population, advanced medtech and digital health solutions, tourism-related technologies, 
and building transport and logistics technologies for an improved urban living solution. Challenges, quite a few. Many Malaysian conglomerates have ambitions to go digital, but may lack clarity and action plans. A greater understanding of Malaysian markets, contacts and relationships are often required. Competition from substitute markets such as China and Singapore. And the market is highly competitive and very price sensitive. Strict financial regulations which, which are with a largely opaque and complex licensing process means you need a partner. Indonesia has a rapidly modernising economy. It has the greatest number of tech unicorns of any market in ASEAN, more than Australia. It has an annual startup investment of over $3 billion and has a deep and diverse ecosystem of technology entrepreneurship. Traditionally closed industries such as banking, health, telecommunications and public services all need support as the organisations transition to networked modern institutions. With a market of 260 million to serve, a new generation of tech leaders is emerging and they seek tech solutions and talent to fuel their growth and competitiveness. The key areas of opportunities are cybersecurity products and services, mobile applications and identity authentication, cloud solutions, AI and data analysis. They also need training and training partnerships for professionals in the digital economy. The challenges, again, Australia is a late mover into the Indonesian tech scene in comparison to the US, Japan, China and Singapore. High initial establishment costs and the need to work with local partners. Solutions developed for the Australian context are really unlikely to succeed if simply rebadged. In general, Australian solutions need to be redeveloped for the specific needs of the international Indonesian market. The Philippines has a large internet usage rate and 70% of the economy is driven by major Philippine conglomerates who are looking to defend and grow their businesses and transform data into revenue. Broad digitization of the economy is driving demand for technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship solutions. Multilateral banks such as the Asian Development Bank, ADB, are headquartered in Manila and they're very focused on livable city technologies and solutions. So the key areas of opportunity include the servicing of the IT business processing outsourcing industry and the fast growing local conglomerates. Cyber security and logistical and supply chain efficiency technologies for the local agricultural sector. The challenges include the infrastructure and the low internet speed, limited IT budget in government and the private sector. They're very price sensitive. And of course, the traditional US centric market. Thailand, Thailand 4.0 is a new policy introduced to kickstart its economy and incentivize companies to innovate, move up value chains and become more globally competitive. Internet and digital infrastructure are ready to support these businesses. Large corporates and conglomerates are receptive to exploring new technologies and new business models to stay competitive. Thailand is a global leader in social media and e-commerce. 38 million Thais access Facebook every day. Key areas of opportunity, enterprise technologies targeting large conglomerates and the multinationals, government initiated projects to leapfrog development, FinTech, national identification, inshore tech, wealth management and investment advisory. Logistics and supply chain, efficiency technologies, smart, sustainable and livable cities. As Thai commerce is very customer centric, the use of AI or big data for tailored services is really important. The challenges, again, global competitive. Some Thai businesses often have ambition to go digital, but may, may lack clarity or a plan for action. 
Traditionally a brand loyalty market, there is a real need to broadly build the competitive profile of Australian capability. You really need a local partner. So in conclusion, ASEAN is a dynamic, high growth region offering real and diverse opportunities for Australian business. But we need to raise our profile and catch up with the competition. Thank you.